Hey there, so yes, this is a piece of crap television. I found this on the side of the road and why am I even showing this thing to you? Well, let me tell you a little bit about it. Uh, it's an LXI series. Um, I think this was sold by Sears and Roebuck here in the United States, but it's actually made by Funai, which I think is a Japanese company. Anyways, very, very low end TV. It's 19 inches and it was just left in the dirt and I just picked it up and threw it in my car and thought, man, yeah, it'd be something fun to play with. But why am I showing this to you? Again, that's the question. Um, I decided to see if it A, worked, and then B, see if I could do an RGB mod on it. So what's an RGB mod, you might ask? Well, that is adding an RGB analog input to this otherwise crap television set. RGB is what arcade machines use. Uh, some game consoles, the Atari ST, Amiga, also uses RGB at 15.7 kilohertz because, of course, this is NTSC. So, uh, yes, I plugged this TV in, and it did work. So, as you can see, it's taken apart a little bit here. This is the main controller board, which is out of the TV and how, you know in my holder, so I could work on it. So, this TV was made in 1999. So, it's pretty end of the life for television sets, and that means it's highly integrated. The entire television has literally... These two integrated circuits, well, there's a little tiny small package there, maybe that's a, a ROM or something, EEPROM, but it literally just has these two single chips. That is it. Other side is just passives, uh, transformers and capacitors and things like that. And as you can see, lots of surface mount. It's a single-sided board, so all the traces are only on this side. Uh, interesting is it only has an RF input. It has a tuner on the bottom here. The video inputs, it had provisions for front mounts but they're not soldered and there's a lot of unpopulated components here so there's no way those would work. The first thing you have to do is figure out if the CRT has the input has an RGB input even on one of the chips here. And I did some research looking up the part numbers of these and I figured some stuff out. So let me show you the data sheets. So the primary quad flat pack chip, that's the surface mount square one, is a Mitsubishi M 52772 FP, FP for flat pack. I couldn't find that data sheet, but I found a 775, figured it was close enough. You know, these are all similar. And if you see here, it's a VIF, SIF, Video Chroma Deflection NTSC. It's basically an all in one chip that handles everything there is to run a television set like this, at least all of the video parts. But when we look at the pinout, right off the bat, here it is RGB input. Now, what this didn't mention in the description up above is this has no on-screen displays. So, these RGB inputs are probably used for the on-screen menu display, things like that. There's a good chance that these are analog, but it's also possible that these are digital TTL inputs. It's really hard to tell reading through this data sheet. But this is a sign right here that there's a possibility of an RGB mod. The other chip on here is a closed caption decoder chip and on-screen display controller. It sort of does both things. Uh, Mitsubishi also makes it, I can't remember which one of these it is, but it, it matched the datasheet perfectly. And here is the RGB and out signals. And typically it's not just RGB because, you know, this is an overlay of graphics on top of the regular TV signal. So this extra fourth line here, out one, is usually uh, made high whenever there's an RGB signal that needs to be displayed. So the other chip will essentially show the regular TV picture, but as soon as this line goes high, and with them, it will show whatever's coming in on the RGB, and you can actually, you know, that way you can show graphics that are overlaid on top of the NTSC signal. But typically, if you pull one of these high or low, I can't remember which way it needs to go on this chip, it will either show only the NTSC signal or only the RGB signal. And when you watch this on the oscilloscope, you'll see a pulse you know, that matches up with the text. There's another problem as well. So because this television has the RGB, did you notice there was no sync signals coming in from that other chip? It's basically just input into here using RGB. Um, I can't remember, I think fast blank, fast BLK, BLK, that's pin 30, that is the one that's connected to the output on the other chip. So this is the one that blanks it and switches to the RGB input. Notice there's no sync input here, and normally not a big deal, you would just use the video input on your TV, say if you're using a PlayStation console, you would hook the video composite up, and that would send the syncs, and then you could use the RGB to essentially show the screen. But this has RF channel three, and short of using an RF modulator, I gotta figure out a way to get, get the composite input onto here. 
So on some TVs, the TV tuner, that's the video or the RF input, actually just outputs a composite signal right out of the tuner and that's what goes into the video chip. So you could just hijack that signal obviously and then input the composite signal directly into the video chip. But on this TV for you know ultra cost reduction, the tuner actually outputs an IF, an intermediate frequency. So essentially whatever channel you pick, it brings that frequency down to like 54 megahertz or whatever the IF is. And then the main video chip does the processing. So looking here at the block diagram, this is the IF section of the chip. So see it says VIF in, that's the video intermediate frequency in, and there's all this stuff here and it results in a composite output. So essentially, you could draw a line through here, and this section of the chip that does the IF, which is frequency conversion to a composite signal, is completely isolated. And what's cool about that is that means that this video output isn't just used to say output like to a possible video out connector on the TV, but it actually loops around and is connected here to the TVY input here. So this section is the video switcher and see here's where it has external video C in. This is what's not connected and there's a bunch of components missing. But TVY in is actually connected through to this video output. So that's perfect. That means I could just cut the signal that comes out of here, use the passive components that are on the board, like the because this requires a capacitor and stuff like that. I could use these, but I'll cut the cut the trace and then I'll solder into the middle, and hopefully that will give me a video signal. Okay, so here's the main video chip, and I'm not going to go into too much detail because every TV is going to be different, and you know it's very unlikely you're going to run across this exact TV. But essentially, looking at the pinout. The video output from the IF section is up on this part of the chip. And actually, I put a little black dot on the board right here. This is where the video output signal was found. You know, I could trace it out, goes through some passives and over somewhere else. I don't know where, it doesn't matter. So what I did, and it's gonna be hard to see, is I used my knife and I actually cut the trace right here. So I did that because I wanted to poke around and just kind of see where the best point to inject the video signal might be. because. You know, this needs some passives to, you know, bring the signal in appropriately into this chip. So I wanted to kind of poke around through the video path and just figure out where it was. Now, the video in on the block diagram uh, is actually right here. And it may be hard to see, but it actually says, I mean, a hard time seeing, TV in right here. So they, they hardly labeled anything on here, but they actually labeled TV in. This is a little jumper link on the other side of the board. This, if I trusted with the multimeter, is actually the input into the chip. And it goes through a capacitor here, and then it goes through another capacitor. And you can see this green wire soldered here. This is actually where I ended up putting the video composite input. So this RCA cable here with clip leads is coming from my video test pattern generator. As you can see, it's connected to this green wire I have soldered on the board. The ground is connected to a ground wire here that I have soldered onto the board down there. And if we go to the TV on the front, actually, let me turn it on. Oh, let me plug it in because of course I had it unplugged while working on it. Don't want to kill myself. Turn on the television there. Let's go take a look at the other side. All right, here's the TV, and it's funny. You see it says three, like it's in channel three. Well, uh, I'm currently showing a black picture. Let's put this on. There we go. There it is, SMTP color bars. And uh, yeah, it's pretty darn great. And of course, the funny thing is, because the tuner is now bypassed, even though it says channel three, if I switch the channels, it the number will change, but nothing actually changes on the screen. So we're getting a nice, sharp, NTSC interlaced signal here. Yeah, not bad. I mean, I don't love the color balance here on the NTS signal, but it doesn't matter. I'm not actually gonna be using this. I mean, I guess I could for like say Nintendo or something. All we're gonna do is we're gonna input a sync signal into here. It doesn't even matter that there's a video signal on. We just need the horizontal and vertical syncs, like a composite sync. That's what this TV needs to display an RGB signal. So next up, does the RGB input work? Okay, so I'll be a little careful. This board is currently running right now. Luckily, uh, the hot side is completely over on this side of the board. It has very clear delineation between hot and cold. So this is the do not touch area. All of this stuff is low voltage and is safe. So the video chip that generates the on-screen graphics and the closed captioning is right there. And 
convenient is the television provided little uh, jumper links on the other side of the board right here for RGB and that output signal. So I just snipped them on the other side and I've attached these wires. Now, again, remember I said that they, they could possibly be digital, you know, TTL level? Well, measuring them with my Rigol oscilloscope showed that they weren't. They were, the voltages were pretty low, like in the one-ish range, which is good actually because one volt peak to peak, I think is typically what RGB is coming out of a PlayStation, although maybe at 0.7. So I don't know, but I figured it's not going to be perfect, but there's some more passives that kind of go between here and the video chip, and I thought maybe those will help bring the level down to whatever this chip needs. I don't know. So since I figured out, you know, having these four cables available to me, which one was the out signal, it turns out to be this gray wire here. If you disconnect this completely, you entirely lose the picture. You have no RGB input and you have no composite. So I figured out that you either need to ground this or you need to connect it to about 1.38 volts. I didn't test the tolerance of the voltage input, but that's what this thing was outputting when I looked at it on the multimeter. I mean, this might accept two, three volts, I don't know, but I figure if I have to create a voltage divider anyways, I might as well just make it the same voltage of what this chip's outputting. Okay, so we're showing the menu on top of the color bars. Let me just pick something else. It's a little easier to see. Okay, so there we go, there we go. We got a crosshatch with the menu on top. If I disconnect this gray wire entirely, we get nothing, no picture. Now, if I connect it to the 1.38 volts, there we go, we got just the menu. So right now we're looking at a pure RGB signal, meaning this is what we're gonna use when we want to look at the input, like say the PlayStation or whatever. And if I take this wire and I ground it, then we get the crosshatch and notice there is no more menu. And the Dawn Tree menus are being displayed right now but we pure have a pure composite input. Something else that gives me hope is that while this is being overlaid on top of a crosshatch or any other picture, the RGB was not very sharp. It was kind of fuzzy around the edges, but now when we're running it in full RGB mode, I mean, I, the crosshatch is completely hidden. I like how sharp everything is here. I mean, it's not, you know, amazing. This is a crap television set, but generally this looks pretty good. Okay, so this is kind of a funny display, but I have the PlayStation kind of CD player displaying on here, and it's the composite signal. This is all composite. You have the usual NTSC dot crawl artifacts. Like if we look at the sphere here, does that show up in the camera? I'm not sure it does, but there's dot crawl going on here. But what's happening is you see lighter text, which is the on-screen display, and that is currently hooked up to the RGB output of the PlayStation. So, what's happening is where the caption text is here is now showing through the RGB signal. And the O here is a perfect example. The red is causing the dot crawl, NTSC artifacting, but right here over the O, it is a nice clear red. So, what I'm going to do is let me back up the camera, and I'm going to switch over the wire, to, that's my multimeter shutting off, I'm switching over the wire, the gray wire, which is the one that does where the overlay is. I'm going to switch it from connected to the on-screen display chip over to my potentiometer. So I'm going to unplug it. We'll lose all picture. And we'll plug it in here. And now we are looking at a pure RGB signal from the PlayStation 1 on this crappy television. Nice, clear, and really sharp for what this crappy TV is, you see the scan lines very clear. It all looks pretty darned good. So currently we have no on-screen display capability. I will need to switch the wires around or create like a toggle switch or something that allows me to access the on-screen displays. And there it is. This is loading and it looks good. The camera looks bad. Let me skip this. Yes, we have Mega Man 8. I am shocked at how good this looks. The color is amazing. <laughs> it's way better than it is on the NTSC. This orange looks good. I haven't even cleaned the screen. It's just filthy. It looks good. So a couple of things. One of the things I found is that the brightness control does affect the overall picture. Um, the brightness looks good. It's very, it's brighter, definitely brighter than it was using the composite input. So the contrast control, which you know controls the overall brightness of the screen, that doesn't work anymore. Uh, sorry for the blanking. This is of course in the camera. Um, 
that doesn't do anything. Obviously, for the on-screen displays, it is ineffective. But, I mean, from a centering perspective, perfect. In fact, it's just as good or bad, because it's cutting off the top here, as was the composite. And there's a little bit of a bar on the side here, and that was exactly the same as on the composite input too. There's absolutely no difference. The on-screen graphics seem to be perfectly aligned, and I don't know how to get into a service mode on this Funai TV, but needless to say, the blacks are perfect, the colors are great. I mean, I can't ask for more. Well, there you go. I'd say this is a real trash to treasure episode. I mean, I don't do those, but I was gonna throw this away and I think I'll keep it now. I'm just gonna modify the case, add the RCA jacks, add the toggle switches, switch in between a composite RGB and the on-screen displays. But I'm shocked. This works better than I had ever hoped. I've seen other people do RGB mods. There's lots of people doing them on YouTube and they don't always work so great. You get weird like graphics that just, you know, there's overblown or you have sync issues. This one, at least with the PlayStation, zero issues. So anyhow, if you thought this was useful uh, or interesting, give me a thumbs up. Uh, put your comments and the questions in the comment section below. Yeah, I mean, I'm shocked. And uh, that's it. Thanks for watching. Bye.